Welcome to Image Processing with ArcGIS Pro. 12 YouTube videos summarize image processing lab exercises available in a step-by-step -step lab manual that accompanies this textbook. Download the lab manuals at the site shown and obtain more textbook information at the second site shown publisher's website. Download the lab manual and data used in the lab exercises if you want to use the step-by-step -step instructions and process the imagery and DEMs while viewing the YouTube videos. The examples used in the videos and lab manual are discussed and shown in the textbook, improving GIS student understanding of essential remote sensing principles and technology while learning how to process and enhance images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. The lab manual, shown, a page is shown in the upper right, and 12 YouTube videos are designed for GIS instructors, students, and users who want to do their own processing, enhancement, and information extraction of satellite and airborne images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. You can see the 12 exercises, the tutorials um, listed here. They cover um, a broad range of image processing tasks, algorithms, and help you find where these tasks are located on the various menus in ArcGIS Pro. The lab exercises require ArcGIS Spatial Analyst Extension. Contact Jealous at ls-geospatial.com for any questions or comments and visit the publisher's website for more information and resources on the textbook. In Lab 5, we want to interpret features of interest on imagery using heads-up digitizing. So what we're going to do in this lab are the steps. Um, we're going to build a new blank shape file and choose the fields and attributes. So it's like front-end loading. What do we actually want to have in our attribute table? And it is critical to build an attribute table while you're digitizing. Then actually go through the process of adding these fields to the table. And then we'll digitize some lines and, and bring in some points and polygon shape files that are already created. Now to show how useful heads-up interpretation can be, I'll just show some examples. This is where I had a project and um, I'm starting to build a geological GIS database with attribute tables. So this is just off of old maps that I found, strike and dip. And then I interpreted my own strike and dip and you see I'm building this attribute table which allows me to label these if I wanted. And then I started drawing faults. And what's really powerful with this software is that as you draw in this direction, um, hatchards or whatever will be on one side. If you go in the other direction, they're on the other side. So you can really customize the lines that are on your map and build this attribute table. And so you can query. Here we're doing a query. And there you're seeing the table. More line work. So they're separate. And the uh, client or whoever you're doing this work for can clearly see you know, betting that's inferred, betting that's, that's certain. And then you can make really beautiful maps um, using ArcGIS with features that you interpret from imagery. Another example, pretty intense, this is strike and dip. So you can see estimated strike and dip from stereo models. It was uh, Aster, Aster Stereo satellite data. And we zoom in on this little area, you can see the level of detail in this uh, map. And then finally, it doesn't have to be satellite data. Um, I've been doing a project here where I have an apple orchard and I'm using a drone, a phantom, to fly using maps made easy to build ortho photo mosaic. And that's what we're seeing here. It's probably 40 or 50 frames, very high resolution. And I'm proposing to replace some apple trees where I have these gaps. And so I'm using the same process you use for geology or for environmental work and building an attribute table so that I can send this out to people and say, okay, do you want to fill these in? And because I have an attribute table, I can track the success of the planting as time goes on. So here we can see our catalog contents for our data. We have two shape files that are already built with uh, save the symbology as layer. And here's our aerial photograph that we'll bring over, load into ArcGIS. And you can see it's a ortho aerial image of a parking lot. The metadata that is over here on this text file is really quite complete. It's the uh, Contra Costa ortho project. You can see across this whole county, which is huge, they flew at different heights. Gives you lots of information about um, the LIDAR that was also collected. We'll look at creating a shape file 
and also a feature class because you can decide if you want to use the geo database so we'll open this up the output we'll go to new I'm going to create a new shape file the location yes the name of this feature let's call it the parking lot lines I'll just call it version 1 it's not a polygon it's going to be lines poly lines and it has no M and all that now the coordinate system will make it the same as the ortho image which is in state plane and we're done and I don't necessarily want it um, yellow so I'll double click and I go to properties and I'll change it to I mean brown I'll change it to a bright yellow and also save the project now that I'm starting to work on it I have five we'll call it now we'll make a blank feature class it's done a little differently here we go up since it'll be in the the uh, geo database and this is where we say new feature class and the name will be lines we we'll call it version 2 no alias it's a polyline we don't need Z's and notice it's six steps make this smaller because you can't see that and we don't have any new fields to import it's got the correct map projection and I'm taking the defaults on all these let's bring it over and this one will make um, bright red So we can choose which one we want, a shape file or a feature class um, going forward. Again, I'll save the project. Now the next step is to, is to do some front-end loading and think about what do you want to map. You have to choose the categories and the attributes for the table that we're going to build. And so as placeholders, I just put in um, what's the type of feature that I'm mapping, what's its condition, what is my confidence, and what are my comments. And it's critical that they have the same spelling. The first letter is capitalized. You have to choose if it's going to be lowercase. As you go down and you fill in the blanks in your table, um, the entries have to have to be consistent. And so as placeholder again, I'm just saying um, the type. Maybe I'll, I'll have paint stripe, curb, and arrow for lines. The condition could be excellent, good, or fair. And the confidence high, medium, low. And then I've got comments. For points, I'll say it's going to be light pole, sign, ticket box. For polygons, it'll be tree canopy, grass area, and sidewalk. So you can add new attributes, change these as you go along, but it's important to start up with like a template for your mapping. So I'll start to build the attribute table. I'll work with the shape file in this exercise. So I right click, open up the attribute table. It takes a lot of room on the first pass. doesn't really need to do that, so I want to move it down. What's nice also is it can um, float. Like I can send it out here and make it a little um, wider for some of my fields so we can see. Move this up. Now to add a new field, the other thing we'll notice before we start is, see it says feature layer. Um, over here we can touch the edit and see all the different options you have. We'll really be dealing with creating lines and then modifying as we find some errors in some of the data that we um, bring in. Now we've got this parking lot lines and what we want to do is add a field. And so I'm sure there's other ways to do this. This is the way I do it. So add a field. We come up with this new little table and here's our field that we're going to add. And you have to remember what we set up. So the first one we're going to do is um, type. It's going to be text. And the length is um, 
since there, we counted the number of words in our setup, we'll just say 25. And return doesn't work with this, so you have to click it and make sure that everything is clear. And notice up here is I'm, I can save now. And so it's, it's saving that attribute table, and there it is. So I don't have to have it this wide. I can make it shorter. I'll go back to lines, and I'll add, have to make it a little taller. I'm going to add a new field. I'll fill in a, the next field, and this will be um, according to our um, list condition. It's text, and again, we only need 25 spaces. Go up here and save. And I'll add the other two, confidence and comments, and then come back to this table. So here's our completed um, four new fields. I go over to parking lot lines, and there they are. Type, condition, confidence, comments. Now we want to fill it in. Now we can start drawing our lines. So we open up the edit ribbon and you can see create and this template comes over here I'm going to click on the line I'll zoom into this area and I'll just draw a line double click it and there it is so the type remember we had our um, list of things we wanted to call it this is a paint stripe it looks like it's in good condition I have high confidence and I could say it's diagonal from curb and so I've got that done now we save this in a different way see now the save buttons over here save all edits yes and I've discovered another way to add attributes is I click on this and when I draw the line I can I can also do it here apparently but I'll, I'll continue to do it um, here. Now to, to move around, you have to touch the C key again to get the hand. So let's draw another line. It's already set up, so I can just go click on it. This again is a paint stripe. It's in excellent condition. I have a very high confidence of this, and it's the uh, end of parking slots. I'll zoom out, hit the and I'll do one more line. Because in our design of this we had another category called lines that are curbs so this is actually a curb it's um, in good condition I have uh, high confidence in this and it's next to grass now this is very interesting I've seen this before where um, I end up losing what I typed before so it's the end of parking slot and I, I have to I have to click like over on the side to make it stay now I'm going to save these save all edits yes and then clear the selection so now we'll zoom out and look at our work and here's our three lines so far and if I want to get out of the editing mode I find one way to do it is just get over to explore now, um, what we can say is we built a shape file, and you have to remember that shape files contain many, many um, files, individual files. This is just because it's active right now and it's on the screen. But you got to keep all these in order for the shape file to work. And so that's one thing to keep track of, and zipping the files is a good way to go if you're going to start moving them around. We'll move this menu over a bit. Go back to catalog. Now let's look at doing a point. So we'll drag in this um, layer, parking lot points, and we can zoom to it. And what do we see? 
we see this is probably the bottom of the the uh, pole but our point is in the wrong place that so we did in a previous project. We want to correct this. Maybe we have a more correct ortho photograph or something. We want to slide this over here and get it in the correct location. So we do that with the modify. So we click on the modify. We say move. You select the feature and you actually move, move it. It didn't do very well. Do it there put it at the bottom of this feature and then we want to save this and you can't see right now it's grayed out so what you have to do is you have to hit this back button then you can save the change and then we can open up this attribute table and as usual it, it takes over the whole map and so we can put it in here so now we've got a light pole so I highlighted it and it shows up down in this area and it was in the correct location we only had to modify one pole so let's do another point let's say that in our list of things that we can do with points a sign or a ticket box so we can look for a sign this is probably a sign let's assume it's a sign and and one question you should ask yourself is which way is the sun coming from in this image and which way are the vertical features, poles, being distorted? Because remember, uh, aerial photo, if the center is over here, all there's a radial distortion on all the, the vertical lines. And if the sun is coming from the top, the shadow will be towards here. So which one of these is the shadow and which one is the actual pole? So we'll, do, we'll, we'll say this is a sign, and we'll just go ahead and create. You can see we're into points now. Touch the points and go over here. We'll call this a sign. And it's in good condition, we think. Um, but our confidence in this is low. And it's in the grass. So again, I'll save it. Save all edits. Clear the selection, and we'll go back to catalog to our final feature of interest. And I'll zoom to zoom to layer. Oh, look, we've got two. I have to go. I want to roam around. I could have pushed the C, but looks like we've got two trees that are already mapped. So let's open up this attribute table. Yeah, we do. Um, two trees that are mapped. And this one again is in the wrong place. So we go back to Edit, Modify, Move, get it in the right location. Click this back arrow and say Save. Save all edits. Now, I don't think we need to do any more digitizing in this exercise, but let's save the project. Click on all of these and zoom to layer. And this shows all of our features and clear. So that's what we mapped. Two trees, a bunch of lines, and three points. And if we want to save this map as a JPEG, we go up to share, send it out as a map, a JPEG. We'll just call it map, line five. Looks good to me. Export. Let's see if it shows up. And so let's see how our map looks. And so that that's what we did today. I've zoomed in a bit and we've got all of our points. So that concludes lab five on heads up digitizing.